Well, starting off this hour, for years, negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership have played out behind closed doors. And yet, the nations involved in this brag that it could be the biggest trade agreement of our day that would address everything from food to medicine to intellectual property. The 12 nations involved in the TPP talks could be getting close to a deal. However, critics warn this agreement could actually hurt the public by acting on behalf of major corporations instead of for the public good. Last week, thanks to the latest document dropped by the secret spilling organization WikiLeaks, people from around the world got a first glimpse of part of those negotiations dealing with intellectual property. The fact that this information came from WikiLeaks instead of the Obama administration, which touts transparency, has infuriated some. Well, it's remarkable. We have to depend on WikiLeaks to find out what the hell's going on. So what did we learn from the 95 leaked pages? And how did WikiLeaks get its hands on the draft of the TPP talks to begin with? Earlier, I was joined by Christian Hroffnansen, WikiLeaks spokesperson, and I asked him why WikiLeaks is so interested in the TPP. Well, what we, of course, uh, are, are all about is, uh, is revealing the secret documents that are being kept uh, from the uh, general public, uh, which are affected by do these documents, and that certainly applies to this uh, draft to the TPP, as is uh, evident from uh, the content of the, the this very important chapter of the, the draft uh, concerning intellectual property rights. Now, should we expect more leaks like this uh, about the TPP negotiations in the future? Well, we are always careful about talking uh, about what is in store, and uh, I think I'll stick to that policy. Uh, but we have been uh, publishing information which are of uh, great importance uh, to the general public, uh, and uh, well, we have to we have to see what uh, what we uh, have in store. Now, how did your organization acquire these documents, if I can ask? Well, of course, that's another question. I, I could never give you a, an answer that you would uh, would like. Uh, we are uh, very dedicated in, in protecting our sources, and we go to great lengths in in, in protecting them. And uh, we never discuss uh, our sources, basically. Understood. So, what is the most startling thing to you about this leaked TPP document? Well, there are very many things that uh, that are of grave concern. Uh, that uh, spring out of this document. Of course, the most important thing, of course, is that the fact that this has been uh, drafted in, in secrecy uh, without the general public, uh, the 800 million people who are going to be affected uh, by this uh, treaty have had a chance to review it. And uh, even in the U.S., of course, there was uh, there has been a, an attempt to uh, fast track uh, this uh, treaty through Congress without. Uh, uh, elected uh, uh, members of the public uh, being able to scrutinize every angle of it and make any amendments to it. But uh, there are many elements within the treaty itself. Uh, we can talk about the, uh, the simple fact that the pharmaceutical industry will uh, uh, make it uh, much harder uh, for uh, the, the poor uh, people uh, within this area to get access to affordable medicine. Uh, we can talk about uh, the effect on the uh, um, the internet, uh, which are going to be is going to be stifling. Uh, there are so many angles there, and uh, it's all is serving, of course, the the big corporate interest. And uh, it is not surprising, of course, when you consider that the, uh, hundreds of representatives from those interests had uh, uh, priority access to the negotiating table access that was denied to the general public. So do you think the biggest problem uh, about these negotiations is that they aren't transparent or that they cover too much? What should people be most concerned about here? They should be, be concerned about, of course, the process, uh, that is, uh, the secrecy surrounding this uh, very important treaty, uh, covering a uh, large part of uh, world trade, a third of world trade. Uh, these are countries that uh, combined have about 40 percent of the GDP of the entire world. And it is setting a benchmark even for further negotiations uh, in this field. It has been uh, proclaimed by the Obama administration that this is uh, the, uh, the blueprint which is going to be used in the recently started negotiation uh, on a transatlantic treaty 
between the U.S. and the European Union. So this is basically setting the standard on world trade in total secrecy. Uh, another uh, uh, element which uh, should be uh, extremely worrying to, uh, to the general public is the fact that uh, the enforcement mechanisms uh, that uh, are set out in this, uh, this proposal, uh, setting out uh, uh, supranational uh, tribunals, uh, will, will, will supersede uh, high courts and supreme courts in, in the countries. Uh, where corporate lawyers will uh, be sitting and judging on matters concerning individuals within uh, each of the countries concerned, uh, bypassing the judiciary. So it is a, a, a very, very grave uh, matters that are, are coming uh, front uh, to our to our attention with this leak, and we should be uh, be. Uh, 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 concerned about the simple fact that many uh, elements of this treaty, especially in this chapter, in this intellectual property rights chapter, have been protested and suppressed on the national level. For example, the SOFA uh, idea in the U.S., uh, which uh, is then springing forth in a supranational treaty uh, as a Trojan horse in a, in a, a so-called uh, trade agreement. And I say so-called because only five of the almost 30 chapters in the TPP actually are concerned about the trade. The rest is uh, uh, protective measures, uh, which are uh, uh, all about the interest of large multinational uh, corporations. Very concerning indeed. Now, there are reports that the leak of this chapter could have delayed the passage of the TPP from making the U.S. Trade Representative's deadline. Was that your intention with this leak, is to slow down those TPP talks? Our intention was basically to pass this document, which was on to the general public, uh, a document that was passed on to us. Uh, this is what we are about. We are a publishing organization. Uh, we are fighting uh, unnatural secrecy on matters which concern the general public. And I believe it's, it's only natural that when this comes uh, to light, when, when people start to digest what uh, this entail, uh, when uh, organizations that have uh, been uh, diving into the material and seeing how harmful it could be, like uh, Doctors Without Borders, uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, those who have had grave concerns about matter that uh, this treaty touched upon. Of course, this is raising concern, and the concern is transferred over to elected representatives. And uh, I'm sure, of course, people will uh, take a, a second look and think carefully before they allow their administrations to uh, sign this treaty, as was the plan to do this in total secrecy, which is absurd. And we only have about 30 seconds left, but how involved was Julian Assange in this leak, or has he been sidelined as a result of being holed up in that Ecuadorian embassy in London? No. Julian is, is, was in the, the midst of this, and of course, uh, he directed the entire work. Uh, I can say, without going into any details, that uh, uh, this leak took uh, quite a, a bit of extra work uh, in, uh, in uh, in our work, of course, in protecting our sources, uh, I spent some time in London in the Ecuadorian Embassy, and with Julian, Julian was uh, uh, directing this work uh, and uh, is, of course, directing the organization. Even though uh, he is, uh, he is uh, the work is a bit more difficult, uh, given his uh, circumstances. And on a different note, looking back at the Edward Snowden leaks, what are your thoughts about that? Would your organization have preferred for him to come to you? Edward Snowden took his own decision, but it's uh, very important to keep in mind that what WikiLeaks started in 2010 was a trend. Uh, we started a new thing, uh, tried to open a window, a door, if you may, that uh, others have followed, and certainly Edward Snowden is, is one of them. And of course, we have acknowledged that and uh, supported him uh, as much as, as we have uh, been able to in, uh, in his plight. Christian Hroftensen, WikiLeaks spokesperson, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.